We have some very, very important things to do on this meeting. But let's not mess around. Right. So it's the real thing this time. I know this is short notice, but as soon as he comes, as soon as he goes, Chas will be leaving us. That's how it is. I can't tell you how long somebody's going to be at my Minton. I may invite him back. Marie de Simone will be coming this um, um, month, and Sonia Chiquette will um, be one of my. Um, be someone who will do the uh, spiritual workshop um, with me for the Mercury retrograde season. And really, you can use it for any Mercury retrograde season. So we may as well, you know, we may well prepare this in advance for all of you. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a short story. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to not read it to you out loud, but I'm going to play um, the um, audio. If I read this story before, actually. Um, all right. You know, this story is a story that um, is really wonderful to listen to read out loud. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. Now. which accounts here. All right. Now, um, all righty. So what I want to do, um, what I want to have all of you do is I want to have you pull up the PDF. I'm going to put the link to the PDF in the chat so that you can see this. By the way, the monthly astrology video is up. And also the um, horoscope for August 29th through 31st is up as well. So um, the next time you see Linda, then tell her that I'm very involved in the event. And I don't know. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not going to read this. I've tried doing that. And um, yeah, so... I'm going to play the audio and let's listen to the whole entire thing. All righty, here we go. Does everyone have that pulled up? 
type some yeses or noes in the chat so that I can take a look at you. And also what I'll do is I will be available at the end of this live stream to answer some of your questions um, on astrology of how um, you're going to benefit or um, malin, um, 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 malefit, <laughs> um, you know, struggle and maybe need to, eat, um, you know, work at something or get over a certain hurdle this month. So you can type those in the chat as well. Um, and I will answer those when we're done. Um, all right, I'm not going to go over the September astrology. I have a separate video that I did over that. It's about 23 minutes, I think. I'll narrow it down. Um, but so, yeah, feel free to leave those questions. And again, I want to see yeses or noes. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of get yeses. One no. Two knows. Okay, I think that I will just get into it here and now. All right, so. Go back to the beginning. Yes, it is at the beginning. Here we go. The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, we have to go to the very beginning. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Here we go now. The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You who so well know the nature of my soul will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. At length, I would be avenged. This was a point definitively settled, but the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself felt as such to him who has done the wrong. It must be understood that neither by word nor deed had I given Fortunato cause to doubt my goodwill. I continued, as was my wont, to smile in his face, and he did not perceive that my smile now was at the thought of his immolation. He had a weak point, this Fortunato, although in other regards he was a man to be respected and even feared. He prided himself on his connoisseurship in wine. Few Italians have the true virtuoso spirit. For the most part, their enthusiasm is adopted to suit the time and opportunity to practice imposture upon the British and Austrian millionaires. In painting and gemmery, Fortunato, like his countrymen, was a quack. But in the matter of old wines, he was sincere. In this respect, I did not differ from him materially. I was skillful in the Italian vintages myself, and bought largely whenever I could. It was about dusk, one evening, during the supreme madness of the carnival season, that I encountered my friend. He accosted me with excessive warmth, for he had been drinking much. The man wore motley. He had on a tight-fitting party-striped dress, and his head was surmounted by the conical cap and bells. I was so pleased to see him that I thought I should never have done wringing his hand. I said to him, My dear Fortunato, you are luckily met. How remarkably well you are looking today. But I have received a pipe of what passes for Amontillado, and I have my doubts. How? Oh, said he. Amontillado? A pipe? Impossible. And in the middle of Carnival? I have my doubts, I replied, and I was silly enough to pay the full Amontillado price without consulting you in the matter. You were not to be found, and I was fearful of losing a bargain. Oh, let me get it down because I have to think about myself first before anybody else. And I'll be saying the same thing nine years from now, just so you know. And ten and eleven years from now, too. Okay, here we go. I'm on I have my doubts. 
and I must satisfy them. Amontillado, as you are engaged, I am on my way to Lucchese. If anyone has a critical turn, it is he. He will tell me Lucchese cannot tell Amontillado from Sherry, and yet some fools will have it that his taste is a match for your own. Come, let us go. Whither? To your vaults. My friend, no, I will not impose upon your good nature. I perceive you have an engagement. Lucchese, I have no engagement. Come. My friend, no. It is not the engagement, but the severe cold with which I perceive you are afflicted. The vaults are insufferably damp. You are encrusted with nitre. Let us go, nevertheless. The cold is nearly nothing. Amontillado. You have been imposed upon. And as for Lucchese, he cannot distinguish Sherry from Amontillado. Thus speaking, Fortunato possessed himself of my arm. Putting on a mask of black silk and drawing a rocolaire closely about my person, I suffered him to hurry me to my palazzo. There were no attendants at home. They had absconded to make merry in honor of the time. I had told them that I should not return until the morning, and had given them explicit orders not to stir from the house. These orders were sufficient, I well knew, to ensure their immediate disappearance, one and all, as soon as my back was turned. I took from their sconces two flambeaux, and giving one to Fortunato, bowed him through several suites of rooms to the archway that led into the vaults. I passed down a long and winding staircase, requesting him to be cautious as he followed. We came at length to the foot of the descent, and stood together on the damp ground of the catacombs of the Montresors. The gait of my friend was unsteady, and the bells upon his cap jingled as he strode. The pipe, said he. It is farther on, said I. But observe the white webwork which gleams from these cavern walls. He turned toward me and looked into my eyes with two filmy orbs that distilled the room of intoxication. Nitre? <laughs> he asked at length. Nitre, I replied. How long have you had that cough? <laughs> my poor friend found it impossible to reply for many minutes. <laughs> It's nothing, he said at last. Come, I said with decision, we'll go back. Your health is precious. You are rich, respected, admired, beloved. You are happy, as once I was. You are a man to be missed. For me it is no matter. We will go back. You will be ill, and I cannot be responsible. Besides, there is Lucchese. Enough, he said. A cough is mere nothing. It will not kill me. I shall not die of a cough. True. True, I replied, and indeed I have no intention of alarming you unnecessarily, but you should use all proper caution. A draught of this medoc will defend us from the damps. Here I knocked off the neck of a bottle which I drew from a long row of its fellows that lay upon a mould. Drink, I said, presenting him the wine. He raised it to his lips with a leer. He paused and nodded to me familiarly while his bells jingled. I drink, he said. To the buried that repose around us, and I to your long life. He again took my arm, and we proceeded. These vaults, he said, are extensive. The Montresors, I replied, were a great and numerous family. I forget your arms. A huge human foot door in a field azure. The foot crushes a serpent rampant whose fangs are embedded in the heel. And the motto? Nemo me impune la cassite. Good, he said. The wine sparkled in his eyes and the bells jingled. My own fancy grew warm with the Nadal. We had passed through walls of piled bones with casks and puncheons intermingling into the inmost recesses of the catacombs. I paused again, and this time I made bold to seize Fortunato by an arm above the elbow. The nitre, I said. See, it increases. It hangs like moss upon the vaults. We are below the river's bed. The drops of moisture trickle among the bones. Come, we will go back, ere it is too late to cough. <laughs> it is nothing, he said. Let us go on. But first, another draught of the meadow. I broke and reached him a flagon of de Graal. He emptied it in a breath. His eyes flashed with a fierce light. He laughed and threw the bottle upward with a gesticulation I did not understand. I looked at him in surprise. He repeated the movement, a grotesque one. You do not comprehend, he said. Not I, I replied. Then you are not of the Brotherhood. How? You are not of the Masons. Yes, yes, I said. Yes, yes. You? 
Impossible. A mason? A mason, I replied. A sign, he said. It is this, I answered, producing a trowel from beneath the folds of my roquelaire. You jest, he exclaimed, recoiling a few paces. But let us proceed to the Amontillado. Be it so, I said, replacing the tool beneath the cloak, and again offering him my arm. He leaned upon it heavily. We continued our route in search of the Amontillado. We passed through a range of low arches, descended, passed on, and descending again, arrived at a deep crypt, in which the foulness of the air caused our flambeau rather to glow than flame. At the most remote end of the crypt there appeared another, less spacious. Its walls had been lined with human remains, piled to the vaults overhead in the fashion of the great catacombs of Paris. Three sides of this interior crypt were still ornamented in this manner. From the fourth the bones had been thrown down, and lay promiscuously upon the earth, forming at one point a mound of some size. Within the wall, thus exposed by the displacing of the bones, we perceived a still interior recess, in depth about four feet, in width three, in height six or seven. It seemed to have been constructed for no special use within itself, but formed merely the interval between two of the colossal supports of the roof of the catacombs, and was backed by one of their circumscribing walls of solid granite. It was in vain that Fortunato, uplifting his dull torch, endeavored to pry into the depth of the recess. Its termination, the feeble light, did not enable us to see. Proceed, I said. Herein is the Amontillado. As for Lucchese, he is an ignoramus, interrupted my friend as he stepped unsteadily forward, while I followed immediately at his heels. In an instant he had reached the extremity of the niche, and finding his progress arrested by the rock, stood stupidly bewildered. A moment more, and I had fettered him to the granite. In its surface were two iron staples, distant from each other about two feet horizontally. From one of these depended a short chain, from the other a padlock. Throwing the links about his waist, it was but the work of a few seconds to secure it. He was too much astounded to resist. Withdrawing the key, I stepped back from the recess. Pass your hand, I said, over the wall. You cannot help feeling the nitre. Indeed, it is very damp. Once more, let me implore you to return, no? Then I must positively leave you. But I must first render you all the little attentions in my power. The Amontillado! ejaculated my friend, not yet recovered from his astonishment. True, I replied, the Amontillado. As I said these words, I busied myself among the pile of bones of which I have before spoken. Throwing them aside, I soon uncovered a quantity of building stone and mortar. With these materials and with the aid of my trowel, I began vigorously to wall up the entrance of the niche. I had scarcely laid the first tier of the masonry when I discovered that the intoxication of Fortunato had in great measure worn off. The earliest indication I had of this was a low moaning cry from the depth of the recess. It was not the cry of a drunken man. There was then a long and obstinate silence. I laid the second tier, and the third, and the fourth, and then I heard the furious vibrations of the chain. The noise lasted for several minutes, during which, that I might hearken to it with the more satisfaction, I ceased my labors and sat down upon the bones. When at last the clanking subsided, I resumed the trowel, and finished without interruption the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh tier. The wall was now nearly upon a level with my breast. I again paused, and, holding the flambeau over the mason work, threw a few feeble rays upon the figure within. A succession of loud and shrill screams, bursting suddenly from the throat of the chain form, seemed to thrust me violently back. For a brief moment I hesitated. I trembled. Unsheathing my rapier, I began to grope with it about the recess, but the thought of an instant reassured me. I placed my hand upon the solid fabric of the catacombs and felt satisfied. I reapproached the wall. I replied to the yells of him who clamored. I re-echoed, I ate it, I surpassed them in volume and in strength. I did this, and the clamorer grew still. It was now midnight, and my task was drawing to a close. I had completed the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth tier. I had finished a portion of the last and the eleventh. There remained but a single stone to be fitted and plastered in. I struggled with its weight. I placed it partially in its destined position. But now there came from out the niche a low laugh that erected the hairs upon my head. 
it was succeeded by a sad voice, which I had difficulty in recognizing as that of the noble Fortunato. The voice said, <laughs> Oh, a very good joke indeed. An excellent jest. We will have many a rich laugh about it at the palazzo. <laughs> Over our wine. <laughs> the Amontillado, I said. <laughs> yes, the Amontillado. But it is not getting late. Will not they be awaiting us at the palazzo? The Lady Fortunato and the rest. Uh, let us be gone. Yes, I said. Let us be gone. For the love of God, Montresor. Yes, I said, for the love of God. But to these words I hearkened in vain for a reply. I grew impatient. I called aloud, Fortunato. No answer. I called again, Fortunato. No answer still. I thrust a torch through the remaining aperture and let it fall within. There came forth in reply only a jingling of bells. My heart grew sick, on account of the dampness of the catacombs. I hastened to make an end of my labor. I forced the last stone into its position. I plastered it up. Against the new masonry, I re-erected the old rampart of bones. For the half of a century, no mortal has disturbed them. In pace requiescant. So that is that story. Yes! Oh. oh my gosh. Okay, I finished it. I fin I have finished it. I bleh, 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 bleh. Okay. So that is that. I'm not gonna let teacher. I'm not going to go back and try to discuss it because, um, well, I could. No, I'm not going to because I don't feel it completely in my body fully, so I'm not going to. All right. So we have that finished. Is there anything else that I that we need to do? Excuse me. Anyone happen to view my latest TikTok videos while I was doing that? Um, okay. Nobody whatsoever. Yep, you can go check them out. All right. Now, let's go and see if there's any other kind of thing before I answer your questions here. Blackboard. Um, okay. Horses. We go to um Um, all right, so we have one more little, um, to listen to here. Is it my last second? Oh, yes, it is.
All right, so if I'm getting this correct, this is my last touches. Yes. All right, so this is a short little poem that I'm going to read called My Last Duchess by Robert Browning. And I'm actually going to read this out loud for this particular one. And it goes something like this. Ferrara, it says. That's my last duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive, I call. That piece of wonder now, Fra Pandolf's hands, worked busily a day, and there she stands. Wilt please you sit and look at her, I said, Fra Pandolf by design for never read, strangers like you, that picture countenance, the depth and passion of its earnest glance. But to myself, if they turn, since none puts by the curtain I have drawn for you, but I. And seemed as they would ask me, if they durst, how such a glance came there, so not the first. Are you in turn and ask the search was not her husband's presence only called that spot? Of joy into the duchess' cheek, perhaps, Fra Pandolf's chance, chance to say her mantle laps. Over my lady's wrist too, wrist too much, not risk too much, over my lady's Rest too much. Or paint must never hope to reproduce the faint half flush that dies along her throat. Such stuff was courtesy. She thought and cause enough for calling up that spot of joy. She had a heart, how shall I say? too soon made glad, too easily impressed. She liked whatever she looked on, and her looks went everywhere. Sir, twas all one my favor, my favor at her breast, the dropping of the daylight in the west, because the sun sets in the west. The bow of cherries, some officious fool, broke in the orchard for her the white mule. She rode with round the terrace, all in each would draw from her alike the approving speech. Or blush, at least, she thanked men, good, but thanked somehow, I know not how, as if she ranked my gift of a 900 years old name with anybody's gift who'd stop to blame that sort of trifling even had you skill in speech which i had not to make your will quite clear to such an one and say just this or that and you discuss me here you miss or there exceed the mark, and if she let herself be lessened so, nor plainly set, her will is yours, forsooth and made excuse, even then would be some stooping, and I choose never to stop. Oh, sir, she smiled. No doubt. Whenever I passed her, but who passed without much the same smile? This grew, I gave command, then all smiles stopped together. There she stands, as if alive. Wilt please you rise, we'll meet the company below. Then I repeat, the Count, your master's known munificence, is ample warrant that no just pretense of mine for dowry will be dissolved. Uh, 
disallowed, though his fair daughter's self is I avowed. At, at starting is my object, nay, will go together down, sir, notice Neptune, though, taming a seahorse, thought a rarity, which claws of Innsbruck cast in bronze for me. Okay, now, I want to see what your uh, questions are, um, so you can type them in the chat. So, what are your questions about, what do you want to know for your own personal life about what's going on in the month of September? Fire away. I'm Mercury and Gemini, and Mercury will go retrograde in life. Feel the effects of Mercury retrograde more, and I would suggest to you... Oh! We disconnected. Thank you all for coming on this live stream.